There's hardly a corner of China without people living in it. Yet for centuries, this huge land was able to absorb much of what human development could throw at it. Early travelers from overseas marveled at the beauty of Chinese civilization and its adoration of the natural world. Today, the historic city of Shangfan in Hubei province is still protected by its ancient walls. This is a place of famous battles and kung fu legends. But we've come here for another reason, to see the Han River and meet the people trying to protect it. Sixty-six-year-old Yun Jian Li runs a community conservation group called Green Han River. They're on the lookout for deteriorating water quality. The water here will soon be pumped 1,000 kilometers north and into the homes of the elite in Beijing. The local government has shut down the worst polluting factories, making this part of the Han unique in China, a river inside a major city which is actually pretty clean. In recent decades, China has seen unparalleled economic growth, and this country's environment has faced an unprecedented assault. Rivers, which can only be described as toxic, are everywhere to be seen. If you choose a random city or town here and go looking for a waterway, you'll be very lucky if it's fit for any human use. We saw people growing vegetables next to a river which has turned black. They're either oblivious to the state of this water are ignoring the dangers of using it or have no other choice. Then there's the air quality. China's air pollution problem is enormous. The impact of coal-fired power stations and heavy industry is felt right across the country. When it comes to industrial pollution of all types, factory employees are at the front line. This hospital in Suzhou has been treating more than 100 workers who breathed in the vapours of a dangerous chemical. It was being used in the production of computers, and in particular, they say, Apple products. We snuck in to visit some of the workers who are still being treated. They didn't want to show their faces. These young women used to finish off laptop computers by gluing on, measuring and then polishing Apple logos. For this, they used a chemical called N-hexane. One of the women has kept some of the logos they used to show that their work was connected to Apple products. Because 
The workers have recovered considerably in recent months. They met us outside the hospital and showed us what it was like when they couldn't walk properly. Doctors say that prolonged exposure to N-hexane can harm the nervous system, lead to muscle damage and even cause paralysis. Their small factory was hidden away in this housing estate and their boss, Zhong Jian Sheng, refused to be interviewed for the program. It doesn't look like it, but Apple computers were being finished off in a little workshop here. At least the workers assumed that the laptops were not fakes. But importantly, if you house an operation like this in a residential alleyway, you're doing so away from the prying eyes of work safety inspectors and the like. But working for a large company doesn't guarantee your safety either. Hu Yong, Jia Jingchuan, and more than 100 of their workmates also became sick after breathing in the vapours from the chemical N-hexane. They and 60 of their colleagues were hospitalised for more than nine months. Unlike the women we met, theirs is a big established factory with its headquarters in Taiwan. So when workers started collapsing at the factory by the dozen, it was not going to be good for their companies or for China's reputation as a manufacturer. The sensitivity of this issue became clear when a plainclothes policeman of some type filmed us using a secret camera in his bag. We turned our own camera on him and he left quickly. We were followed everywhere we went in Suzhou. Their company, WinTech, has now stopped using N-hexane. Nobody from this company, which employs 20,000 people, was available to be interviewed when we visited. And their security guards were keen for us to stop filming. To be fair to this company, the workers say that WinTech did look after them when they got sick by paying their medical bills and keeping their jobs for them for when they got out of hospital. Yet under Chinese law, its workers will only get compensation if they leave these jobs. But it's not only in making computers that China is having problems with toxins. When countries like Australia, the United States and Japan are finished with their keyboards, laptops, hard drives and motherboards, they go back to China to be pulled apart and recycled. This is a thriving business in places like Wenling in Zhejiang province. Children pitching in to help their parents learn of its value at a young age. Mercury, lead, chromium and other poisons from this e-waste leach into the groundwater. 
China is sacrificing its own environment at both ends of the production life of these computers. In this way, it's effectively subsidising other countries. People all over the world are getting cheap electrical goods in part because China is trashing its air, its earth and its waterways. In Zhejiang, these are principally jobs for migrant workers. Poor farmers who've drifted into bigger towns and cities looking for work. In this cluster of shacks, a group of families who've travelled from Anhui province live and work together. <laughs> Apart from overall environmental damage, in the short term it's the health of these workers and their families which could suffer. Nearby, we saw women sorting recycled computer plastic by burning it with a cigarette lighter and sniffing the fumes. By sniffing the plastic, they can quickly identify its type. Imagine the damage to your brain from sniffing burned plastic every few seconds, all day, every day. This woman didn't want to speak on camera. would be wrong to think that in China there's no awareness of industrial pollution and its effects on people. It would also be wrong to think that there's nobody trying to fight against it. Liu Jinmei and Liu Yanping work for the only Chinese law firm that specialises in environmental pollution. And here, they've walked into the middle of what's become quite a large fight. The historic Qingpuling village in the hills above Minho in Fujian province is in a beautiful location. For generations, its inhabitants grew fruit here and they remained a tight-knit community. Then the new neighbours moved in. For the last nine years, an incinerator has been churning out its dark discharges next to the village. The company will soon process industrial material, but at the moment says it's burning medical waste. If you go anywhere near this incinerator, you get an idea of how far the wind has carried the smoke. All of the leaves here are smeared with this black gunk, and the locals say that the whole valley is covered in it. Some 
都觉得头晕。Lin Guanghao was born in this village. After school, he joined the air force, and says he devoted the best part of his youth to the Communist Party. These days, he's angry. 两年时间死了十十一个，死亡人数达到十一个。每个人都知道，还去年注意一下是好几个。我一家人，我家人的孙子，我家人的孙子，我呃呃妹叔的儿子，我妹叔，三十一岁，三十二岁，呃五十九岁，一年扣了三十三个人啊。The villagers believe that it's definitely pollution from the incinerator, which has been killing off their loved ones. The lawyers say there's still no solid proof to directly link these deaths to the incinerator in a court case. But for their purposes, they don't need to prove that the company's pollution has been killing people. Because according to our country's related legal rules, 800 feet of dangerous waste disposal area in the vicinity of 800 feet is not supposed to be kept. 长期居住的，但是事实上，现在这些村民离这些厂子都不到二百米，距离是非常的近，所以必然会对他们造成一些损害。In China, power politics often intervenes when disputes like this arise. Police and government officials somehow heard that we were in town, and they came to pay us a call. Okay, stop. 请问你们哪里的？我们是澳大利亚广播公司啊。A government official told me that they could help us, and then asked a question that would be put to us again and again. Many villagers think that the local government and police have been working hand in hand with the company. So when they thought the local authorities were trying to stop us from interviewing them, you could feel the tension building. They started letting these government officials know what they thought of them. Are you going to say that we can't say any normal words? We can't say that we can't say that we can't say that we can't say that we can't say that. 有苦不能诉，应该这是我们应该实施的成立吗？是我们应该行使的成立，任何人都不能干涉我们，不管哪个部门，特别是你们这些政府跟派出所人员，我们又没打架，又没吵架，又没闹事，你们一直派这些人来干什么？到底？我们给他打个问号，是对我们村民施加压力？你说明这些还要继续再收吗？解决没给我们解决，一到这个时间呢，就进来给我们施压。The villagers were then ordering government officials to leave. Some of the locals were exploding with anger, but the officials still wanted to find out who they could blame for us being there. 谁邀请你们来的？你们是经过他们同意的吗？嗯、是是我们来拍摄，没有人请我们来。不是，那你你们怎么知道这个地方呢？你肯定我我我为什么会问这个啊？你你为什么会问这个？不是 ，A woman threw herself onto the ground in protest, and the official told me that this was not a problem. 我这里好啊，可以。你你就是说你有经过他他们想你们离开以后。Finally, they went. The chaos of the day prompted the incinerator company to speak to us. Yang Guangzhong is the local manager who was on site. Now. 那个老的焚烧炉，你觉得它的污染怎么样？呃，老的焚烧炉，呃，确实有存在，在运行不稳定的情况下，是，是，呃，是会，是是有影响的。呃，所以你觉得老的焚烧炉的污染
肯定会，嗯，对，喝多喝少会，是是不,是不好的，对不对？是不好的。然后那个，在这里的农村有的老百姓说，嗯、呃，他们说有有好多人因为癌症死了，他们说是因为这个污染，你觉得他们说的对吗？这个没有科学的依据，而我们的工人是是长年累月在这边生产的。实际上，我们的工人是第一个接触这个污环境的，所以到目前为止，所我所知的，到现在我的工人没有一个有这样子的。One of the reasons we were allowed in was to see the new incinerators which are being built. The company says that they'll drastically reduce pollution, and that as soon as they're ready, the old one will be shut down. 如果公司能搬走，我们换不鞭炮举手欢迎，我们排长欢迎，叫他马没，他们马上搬走。我们一分钱也不要他赔偿，叫他马上给我给我给我给我滚蛋，给我搬走，搬得越远越好。两个方面，一个我们搬家，一个他们搬家。现在政府已经出面解决他们的搬家，所以这个是，呃，我们觉得企业，我们在为这个社会环境做。做贡献的基础上。If the lawyers can't get the factory to close, then there's the second best option. They'll try and negotiate a settlement in which everyone is moved to a safer location, and this historic town will probably be demolished. Then they'll move on to another pollution case, because there are a lot of them in China. And plenty of potential for them to make enemies. You don't fear? Because for this kind of work, of course, there is a risk. We have prepared for it before we choose. But it is continuing to advance and continuing to open. Until recently, it had been economic growth which had won out every time in China at the expense of the natural world. And at times, it's come at quite a cost to this country's people. I sometimes give the workers 给他们宣传，我说你们挣钱，你们得下来金山银山，如果破坏了绿色青山，到时候你的子孙，金子不能吃，银子不能喝，那到时候他生存不了，他们也要骂你这个老祖宗，你们为什么把地球破坏的这么？ Now there are those trying to turn the tide here. The question is, is it all too late?